Zeman, Director of Fish and Wildlife Restoration. And of course, from the Government of British Columbia, no stranger to this committee, Mr. Finn Donnelly, Parliamentary Secretary for Fisheries and Oceans. I'd like to welcome Mr. Donnelly back to this committee and thank him in the past for his hard work in making sure we passed Bill S-238, which dealt with shark fin importation, and of course, Bill S-203, uh, which dealt with captivity of whales and dolphins. Uh, Mr. Donnelly played an important role in getting that passed, not only through this committee, but through the House as well. So Welcome, Mr. Donnelly, back to uh, familiar territory, except you're not in the committee room as usual. So a big welcome. Thank you, Chair. We will now proceed with opening remarks from Mr. Donnelly for five minutes or less. And he knows to keep it on time or I will cut him off because he's used to it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for those uh, introductory remarks. Uh, very much appreciate it. Uh, bonjour tout le monde. Uh, Hello, everyone. If you it's great to be with you virtually, uh, coming from you, uh, coming to you from the traditional unceded territory of the Quiquetlam First Nation and the Coast Salish peoples. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to present to the Standing Committee regarding the state of Pacific salmon. My name is Finn Donnelly. Yim Yoyos is my Squamish name. Last August, I had the honor of presenting to this committee in my role as chair of the board of a nonprofit charity called the Rivershed Society of British Columbia. This year, I'm here in my new role as British Columbia's parliamentary secretary for fisheries and aquaculture for the new provincial ministry of agriculture and food and fisheries. One of the main reasons I am grateful to be in my new position is to support the value so many British Columbians place on our marine environment and our wild Pacific salmon. When I was last here, I stated that we can't have healthy salmon and salmon runs if we don't have healthy watersheds. I was concerned about the need for increased government action on watershed conservation, protection and restoration and encourage the federal government to work with the British Columbia government, indigenous governments, scientists and academics, conservation organizations, fishers and labor groups, coastal communities and others to conserve, protect and restore salmon. None of us will be able to succeed in restoring wild Pacific salmon on our own. We must work together to ensure they are supported for their whole life cycle. In my new role, I am fully committed to working with First Nations uh, and other organizations and the federal government to restore wild Pacific salmon and their habitat. In fact, the mandate given to me by Premier Horgan states just that, quote, lead work with the federal government to develop new strategies to protect and revitalize BC's wild salmon populations. When I was here last, I, I also asked if you have the political courage to make the tough recommendations needed in your report. Well, now too, I am representing a government and I can assure you that BC does have that courage and we will be demonstrating it in our bold new Made in BC wild salmon strategy that is currently being developed as well as working to double the size of the BC Salmon Restoration and Innovation Fund. Additionally, the province is preparing both a new coastal marine strategy and a new watershed security strategy. These three initiatives will help ensure timely, coordinated provincial action in areas of significance to wild Pacific salmon and their habitats. The, the province of British Columbia was pleased to see in the recent federal budget, the proposed funds for restoring wild salmon in BC, as well as the additional commitment for the BC Salmon Restoration and Innovation Fund, which BC is working towards supporting as well. The province looks forward to discussing in detail how our governments can work together on these objectives, including through supporting watershed restoration and innovation in community fish hatcheries. We also noted the funds that have been proposed for developing a plan to transition from open net uh, pen salmon farming in BC's waters by 2025. Given the recent uh, decision in the Discovery Islands, we would like the federal government to commit to ensuring that any transition plan also includes economic supports for communities, the people who are directly impacted by these decisions while transition while the transition and the return to a wild salmon economy unfolds. When I was here last, I said we needed bold action and leadership. 
along with a commitment of resources and support to help wild Pacific salmon. No one wants BC salmon populations to go the way of the Atlantic cod but we are at a real risk of extirpation of some of BC's once renowned salmon runs. British Columbians want us to work with indigenous leadership as well as our federal, local and community partners to ensure these iconic species not only survive, but thrive into the future. We're going to continue to build a made in BC wild salmon recovery strategy that we can all be proud of. I hope you will join me in taking the actions needed to ensure their abundance and diversity for this generation and generations to come.